Garen is turbo here, guys. Told you, homies. Garen is really good against Jax, really good against Lilia. The W just hard counters Lilia, by the way. The sleep doesn't work. That's Nautilus. Let's see what AD here they go. Maybe maybe Zaya. Kaiser's fine. Kaiser's decent. Kaiser's good. Kaiser's good. Kaiser's good. Alistar. Okay. Not a big fan of Alistar here, honestly. I think that you slam Brom here and uh, it's GG, I think. I think you for sure go Brom. I think Brom is better than Alistar. Garen is turbo here, by the way. Garen is turbo. I think you go Brom, it's better than Alistar on 5. But I think Alistar is like a Labro favorite. Alistar is pretty decent against Kaiser. Garen is good into Jax, guys. Garen is good into Jax, it synergizes with Seju, and also it's good into Lilia, and that's what he saw, right? You can't poke the Garen, like he doesn't care, he's gonna regen HP if Jace EQs, he can block the Jace EQ. Against the three that he saw, it is really insane. He's really, really, really insane. You can sync with me when uh, the, the timer is showing on the screen. The Garen third pick is turbo, but the, the Garen is so good against the three that are showing. Alistair is good against Jax Jace. Why would Alistair be good against Jace? It's like Alistair needs to, to f like flank the Jace. But yeah, Alistair is not bad against uh, Jax. Sure, you can W him out. That's okay. Like Alistair is, Alistair is perfectly fine here. I agree that Brom is pretty bad against Jax. So that makes Alistair a lot better. I think that's a fair point. I think red side draft is better. I I think red side draft is better. I think they have uh, the stronger jungler. I think the bot lane matchup is perfectly fine. Uh, I haven't been impressed with the Jaces we've seen so far. Why no Brom R5? Uh, because Brom is... Honestly, Brom is not good against Lily. Honestly, Alistair is turbo. I take it back, guys. Alistair is much better than Brom. Alistair is turbo. Alistair is much better against Lily, better against Jax, good against Kaiser. I think it's perfectly fine, guys. Exclamation mark, live view. I think Garen is really good here, by the way. Turbo pick, the Garen. I called it before it was picked. Early levels, Broken Blade is a little bit stronger, but keep in mind, both top laners have Ignite here. Both top laners are playing Ignite. Jax with Ignite too. A bit of a... Bit of a it's gonna be Psychopath. There's gonna be Sicko Mode, Psychopath behavior on top. Ja Garen is relatively weak early. Okay. Lovrov loses a potion here. He's going to heal up from his passive. There's no problem. Isn't Ghost better on Garen? No, I think Flash is, 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 is fine. I don't understand. Am I behind or am I ahead, guys? 
Oh, she with the level 3 on bot. We saw this from Malrang yesterday. Oh. And Nuka is also here. Alright, I will pause, okay? I will pause in 5 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll pause. And I will unpause in 3. 1, 2, 3. Guys, I've tried to explain this a million times, and no, people just some people just don't seem to get it. Keep in mind, you need to sync to me. I'm not gonna sync to you guys ever again. Uh, Adam has W here. He has to W the Jax E. Okay, this is weird. This is weird, but I think they can kill him. But this, it's gonna cost him so much. He did. He can't flash. He can't flash because of the silence. <laughs> Adam played it so good. Okay, I think G2 is out. G2 is out. They can block the autos of Zeri. Adam played it as good as he could, but um, yeah, Adam lost a lot of CS here. So it's for the top lane matchup, it's a lot worse for, for Adam, for sure. And then the counterplay of Seju, it didn't lead to anything for G2's uh, bot, lane, bot lane here, so uh, I think this is a good outcome for G2. Is Garen OP champ? I think hidden OP, yeah. I think Garen... I think Garen is good. Keep in mind as well, Sheo went straight into bot. Like, this is turbo for G2 because Sheo also took, like, lost his top side. Like, Sheo is turbo behind, by the way. Like, this is super winning for G2. Like, Lilia is two levels ahead, guys. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's gonna take a long time, Alena. Restarting the router is not gonna help. Yeah, Sejo is way too far behind here. He needs to do like greedy shit. Like Sejo's on wolves, by the way. Nuka has no flash, he's dead. Lavrov is also dead, by the way. Lavrov is dead too. Yeah, BDS didn't recognize at all that their Sejuani is completely fucked in this game and looked for crazy shit on mid. Sure gets his gank though, it's a really big deal. Adam gets oh, they got the smite to get the six. Wow. Rocky Blade actually gets out. They're trying to kill minions. They're trying to kill minions to get the Adam 6 to get the lethal on Jax. But uh, Broken Blade got away. That's a really big deal there. That would have been like the return for Adam. Yeah, it's a big problem how behind she is because um, Yak will be 6 now and the 2v2 is very losing even though they have the Seju combo with Garen. That is going to be a problem. Yeah. Now G2 is looking really really good in this game. Shiro level 3 ganked bot. They killed the Nautilus but um, they paid such a big price. Adam got dove. Shio lost his whole top side. Uh, G2 with a very, very clean punish. And um, Hansam and Mickey have been able to survive the lane uh, so far, even though Seji was in the both side so long. Uh, coming into this uh, Drake situation, Garen is still very strong. His W is a lot more stacked now. Does BDS come not scale better here? I think it's like arguable in both directions. I think that both teams, both team, 
like both teams have tools to fight back. It isn't like super clear that one team scales better than the other because it's more about how strong you are and how you are going to get the first two drakes and the Rift Herald and that lead should be big enough to make your comp better. Because if you're behind on side with Ryze and, and, and Garen as an example, and you can't 3v3 on side, you become a lot weaker. And it's not a question of scaling there, right? It's just it's just relative strength in, in contrast to what's going on in the game. That is more important. And currently now, Jax is in good condition, Lilia is in good condition. Like how on earth are they ever going to contest wherever Lilia is right now with the state of Sejuani right now? There, there's there, you don't you don't compare the scaling here because the early game is just too important, uh, so it's not it's not a scaling race here at all. Where do you max on Garan in pro play? I think it depends on the matchup. I think in this one you, you probably max E into Q. Yeah, I think it was very weird that Chio decided to level 3 gank bot. He decided to level 3 gank bot when this is your top lane matchup and Lilia clears pretty fast. I don't like it. You can't put yourself behind and it, the, the top lane matchup is so volatile because both are playing Flash Ignite. If Jax can stack a wave into you and you're gonna get dove, it's, it's a big problem. Keep in mind as well for the bot play, right? It's like Ryze can keep Pryo but Ryze commit all the way into that bot play as well, with the prior that he had on wave 3. So Jace had the freedom to push wave 4 and go top for the dive. And that was the wave that crashed top as well. So BDS showing like their inexperience, that's for sure. Ooh, double E. Lilia got some juicy buffs on this patch, honestly. Not too bad. Thank you very much, Natchulex. Have a great evening yourself, my friend. Garden top, yes. Garden top into Jax is perfectly viable, guys. Oh, did Nuke do a wrong combo? Wow, very important here from Yike, dude. The fact that Yike hits the E and gets the sleep in from that distance. Why is Seju on same level as as Lilia? Because of catch up experience. <laughs> catch up experience is very balanced, guys. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. It's, it's not my birthday, by the way. <laughs> uh, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Adam! Adam is pretty strong, it is. Um, his item. I'm so tired, guys. I don't know why. It's always when I train legs. When I train legs, I, I am just done. Will you coach in spring? Maybe. I've already declined some offers. Boom! Garden, guys. Garden. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh! Oh, the face rush. Adam is so good, man. Holy, he's disrespecting him, dude. Now that's your emote 113. Bro, Giga Chat. Let's see what happened here at top. Like, what on earth? Why are these guys posturing? What the fuck did Mickey just do? Mickey? Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Honestly, it's good that this happened. Because he would have died. So. Damn. Honestly, I'm happy that Mickey didn't flash over the wall. And queued into the wall. And this is the thing. Again, this is what makes Adam. In the past, I used to look at Adam's signature champions as a liability, but he's been improving so rapidly. We're gonna need to add another champion to the list. We got the Dari. We got the Olaf. You know Bro, the Garen, the Garen champ, Garen champ is OP, guys. I'm, I'm not even kidding. This this Jack's matchup is very easy. For for Garen. But to be fair, Garen is a noob champ, but the base stats of this champ is nuts, by the way. Does Jax Ignite kill Garen on the, on the dive? I'm not so sure. I don't even know if he had Ignite. Okay. It's like on G2, the only person that is fed is the Lilia, and Lilia, Lilia is not the type of champion that uh, is gonna like suddenly 1v9, you know? Garen is coming down here. Garen is a monster for this fight. Uh, honestly, this fight looks pretty equal in terms of the potential. It depends on how many Lilia, people Lilia can sleep. Caps is posturing so far forward. Ooh, important. Mickey smurfed it. Labrov counter engage, okay. Lilia still asleep? Lilia still asleep? Where's the sleep? Okay. Very late. Think I can misuse his spells here. We needed more from it. Knock. Knock with the Q. Q. Alright, flash of Crowny securing it. Okay. I think uh, he didn't have Radiant Virtue for this fight. I think he got saved by Crowny's heal. Crowny's heal was, was clutch here. Yeah, I feel like uh, the way Caps is posturing is a little bit too far forward for my taste. He's baiting the fight, but I don't think he needs to. Um, very big Drake here for BDS. He didn't have Radiant Virtue for this fight, guys. Look at his HP bar, it's way too small to be Radiant Virtued up. But here, the Q to cancel the dash is huge. Then he flashes, and then uh, Crowny heals him to save him. Crowny gets ult on multiple people, and Caps is way too deep. Yike misused his spells here. I think Yike, his first Q was just bad. And I think that uh, if he gets more out of his Q flash, I think they, they sleep everybody there, and it would have been way better. Yeah, definitely Zeri, Zeri is, has a game here where she could 1v9. Good counter engage from Labrov as well. Good counter, counter engage here from Labrov. Have to give props to BDS. I think macro-wise they've looked very sloppy, but I think in terms of their fight selection and how they team fight individually, they've been really good this split. And they've made games very interesting. I remember that specific one against Vitality when they kept smacking the enemy on the forehead. That was a, that was a decent game. They ended up losing that game, but um, the team fighting was still there. Crown is very fed. Okay, I don't like this by Mickey. I think he's just trolling. This is very bad. What the fuck was this, Mickey? Oh my god. BDS are turbo winning, by the way. Turbo winning. Like, BD Crowny is getting way too many kills. Way too many kills for Crowny. Labrov has flash. He's, he's trying to bait the fight. And then they would maybe, maybe commit here. It's like, Zeri's gonna base on Infinity Edge here. 
she's going to really enjoy herself. Yeah, it's like, usually if you're team fighting well, means that you're mechanically good. And if you're mechanically good, uh, you know, mechanics are definitely tougher to teach than, uh, than macro. I think like, like Yike had a moment there to maybe 1v9 if he gets a sick Q flash, but now it's like this gold is on your Lilia and it's really, really whatever. How is Adam two levels up, bro? He just fucking solo killed Jax under the turret. And after that, uh, he's been just been stronger. And he has, uh, like after that, he was level 11 to level 9. Yeah, Mickey, Mickey kind of entered in some of these sequences. Caps looked very concerned. Yeah, I think that uh, the Jace was very out of place. This is just a top diff case. Top diff. And then uh, Zeddy getting all the kills in the fight. Yeah, honestly, I think the chances of BDS winning this game is insanely high. Like, insanely high. Yeah, I think Adam is uh, top three, top laner for sure in LEC. I think it's been Chasey. For me, Photon was best, then Adam second, and then Chasey third. That's uh, That was my ranking. But if Adam 1v9 is his best of three, like... They're diving Labrov here. Ooh, Labrov, okay. Okay, let's see if Labrov can survive. Triple sleep. Good sleep here from Yike. Really good sleep. Really good sleep. Ah, uh, Adam and Shiva very late to this fight. Very late. This sleep now, Yike recovered after that fight. This is gonna be Nash as well, and G2 are back in the game, guys. That was really good. That's what we needed to see from, uh, from Yike. A Kaiser E Evolve isn't like a must have. Only Q Evolve is a must have. Why Zeri doesn't have cleanse? It's not really like a cleanse game. Like having only cleanse for Lilia is. feels really bad. What is Shio doing? Yeah, Shio needs to fight with the Zeri, you know, but to be honest, I think there's no saving your team when they got three, three men slept. Crowny got slept, Crowny got hit, he he got slept and he died, you know? It's like, it's a very awkward game to run cleanse. Okay, Zeri no ult here, Alistair no ult, Adam also no ult, like here, G2 is just in a better position, like there is no tools from BDS to fight back with, so they can't really fight. I think that G2 should have completely slammed them. Yeah, keep in mind, it's Leandri, Demonic Embrace, that is triggered by the Lilia passive. So it's very extended. Uh, but uh, damage over time abilities uh, applying these effects do less damage. It's just that uh, the debuff stays very long, right? Yeah, honestly, the Lilia buffs were really big. Like, uh, I'm happy to see this champion being played. I think that's huge. Uh, Crowning gets Nautilus ulted and then the sleep for two. Garden is nowhere to be found and BDS uh, are just taking fights for no reason at all. Like, I think that... Uh, 
they need to put more hope here in the in the crowny basket and let him scale because I don't know why they are accelerating the game so much. Why are they like fighting over and over again? This is what I mean by right? Sheo. I think that when he's playing Wukong, he looks like a different player altogether. I don't know uh, what to think of the man. Sheo really, really ran it down this game with the level 3 gank bot. I think that was really shit. I think some of these fights have been very awkward. Like, they were very fortunate to win the fight on Drake that Yaki didn't Q flash, you know? It's Crowny, has E, so it's okay. Yeah, Crony was too good, yeah. Yeah, I uh, put the gold lead uh, to use, man. The three-man sleep was huge. What was Garen picked? Garen was picked into Lilia, Jax, and Jace. And uh, Garen is pretty good into those. Garen has a passive to block poke, has the W tenacity to deny the sleep, and has a really good lane phase into Jax. So that's why Garen was picked. Garen was, is, has, has been very good this game. Yeah, this is not the look you want. They're just trying to push you for a fight, but... Okay. Yeah, G2 got so much from the Nash. And uh, the fact that the fight happened on top side allowed them to take Nash on 20 minutes. It's a very big deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. Garen was really good here. It's like they, they got three men slept on the top play and uh, that's it. But Shio got caught. On the fight that BDS won, right? Shio got caught. And I think if Yai Q flashed there, I think it would have been over. But he didn't, right? He he held his spells and didn't get a good sleep off. And then the fight on top happened and it was not good. What happens if Garen buys an Atma for Lilia? What, what happens? Nothing happens. So she does less damage and has less tenacity. There is no hidden interaction or nothing. Not sure how much I like the Garen without the Berserker Greaves. I think it's fine to buy... Uh, like, Force of Nature is still a pretty decent buy. Yeah, Lilia got insanely fed this game. Like, she was way too strong this game. She she got... She was full topside and she got a kill on the first clear. Like, she finished... She based on 37 CS and uh, a kill. I think that uh, BDS are forgetting Crowny's position often in these fights. And they, I think they're also way too far behind to be looking for things like this. Why no Mercs on Garden? Doesn't need. Why would he go Mercs this game? His W gives him tenacity when he presses it, so he can easily tenacity. Uh, he can easily go W on his um, the the Jacks E, and he can do it easily on Lilia Sleep. He can W all the spells because it's all predictable. Yeah, I think he actually sold Berserker Greaves, right? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys are right. Oh. They secure the camps. G2, the way they accelerate games when they are ahead and stronger is, is the best in the league. Like, the, 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 the amount of gold they generated from their Nash was insane. The camp control they have is also insane. Uh, that's why I feel like G2 is going to be a top contender because I think they find clever ways to come back into the game and when they are ahead, I think they are unbeatable uh, at least with what we've seen so far in Europe G2 have never shown any weakness when they were ahead never Zonias is a monster buy here Zonias is just such a great Jax item because Surviving for your Zonia duration allows you to get E again and rotating E twice. Usually, if you E twice in a fight with Jax, you're winning, you know? Uh, 
I think you have to look for a steal. No, you have to look for a steal. I think I think you're 50 50 here, but there's EQs flying and G2 are just keeping it aggroed. And I think this needs to be nerfed, by the way. We see this dance too often. They bursted it. Crown is in the pit, flashes out. He has the target to hit. Crown is gonna have his ult run out here. Can he get his ult? He still has ult, still has ult, Crown. He still has ult. Huge E by Jax. Kaiser can 1v9. Jax just stunned four people, man. BB. 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 Hansama had an easy job, so I'm not gonna hype Hansama too much over this one. You know, he just needs to stay alive and uh, come in with the broom, you know? Really good game from Yike, honestly. I was a bit disappointed about the Drake fight, but. I think Crowny needed to eat to his teammates to hit the Nautilus rather than eating over this wall. Adam, Adam played really good this game, by the way. There's no way people are blaming Adam, no? No way. Garen was a good pick here, by the way. Adam, Adam played very good. How can you blame, I blame Adam for this game? G2 managed to get the, the worst in the map, which is the mid one. Kaiser playing Navori because of Garen? No, Navori is just decent on Kaiser. It uh, has synergy with your kit and your E cooldown goes down so rapidly and you can reposition. But I think that uh, you definitely need LDR here instead of BT, but... It's okay, I guess. Yeah, G2 when they are ahead, they are the scariest team in the league, by far. That's a hook. Let's see the Nautilus ult. Yeah, Shio, very bad look here for Shio. Ah, uh, Broken Blade with the stuns, man. Broken Blade stuns have been really good, man. Well played by G2. Well played. Yike with the sleep on top side was game winning, by the way. Game winning sleep on top side. Really well played. I feel like Shio plays well when he's playing Wukong, but other than his Wukong games, I think he's been. Fuck, my, cap, my microphone just fell down. Give me one second.